Hi guys, in this video I'm showing you how you can set up your own file management system for 3ds Max. We're gonna work with folder structures, we're gonna import, merge and export files and we're gonna use third-party plugin called Connector and a script called Copytor. As a bonus, I will show you how you can optimize your file size and scene size. And now, let's crack on! With every new project in 3ds Max, one of your first tasks is to create a new project folder. It can be found under File and Set Project Folder. The project folder provides a simple way of keeping all of your files organized in one folder. As soon as I press Make New Folder, 3ds Max will create automatically a series of many folders. Those folders will contain all of the files for your project. In this next step, I'm showing you the third-party plugin called Connector. It is made by the guys from designconnected.com, which are creating a beautiful 3D models for interior visualizations. As soon as you download the, the plugin on your computer and install it, you'll have unlimited possibilities for file management and scene management. As you can see, I already installed my connector. On the left hand side of the screen, you can see my tags and folder structure. Connector supports vast amount of file extensions and programs. And now I will show you how I can merge a file from my file library. Just click, select, drag and drop and 3ds Max, actually connector, will ask you to choose one of the following options. In my case, I will select Merge. As soon as my file is loaded inside 3ds Max, Connector will prompt with a message for your texture status. In my case, my textures are missing, so I have to find the location of them. And here is a tricky one. Go back into Connector and click Copy Full Path. Paste the path into the location bar. You might be surprised that sometimes a connector will not be able to find your texture and this is because your texture might be in a different folder as in my case. And then your solution is to find the textures and copy their location and paste that location into the location bar. As soon as I press find, connector will find the textures and connect them to my object. Immediately after that, I can start populating my scene with my model with left mouse clicking and if I press control, I can rotate the model at 90 degrees. For the purpose of this next exercise, I will create a box. And then I will merge another object. The gizmo of any 3D model merged with connector has their gizmo placed at their bottom. This means you can easily place your object on any surface inside 3ds Max. This cool feature works with the 90% of all 3D models. For the remaining 10%, you will need some manual interaction in order to set your objects whatever you want them. In the next example, you will see how we can quickly set a dining table. I'm going to use again the same model. As you can see, I can easily place the model on top of the table. And now I will populate my table with some glasses, but this time it will be FBX and OBJ file. Please do have in mind OBJ and FBX files don't have the ability to snap on any objects as the 3ds Max files have. There is no need to worry, you can select the cup, activate the snap tool and move the object on top of the table. Please do have in mind, your gizmo should be at the bottom of the cup. And the next step is a bit trickier, because I'm going to merge a 3D model which is a group of many 3D models, which makes it useless to snap it on top of the table.
This means I have to separate the group of objects and move them one by one, in this case the cups. And again, I have to set up my gizmo at the bottom of those cups and this should be a rule for you for any 3D object otherwise I might not be able to use my tools as I'm showing you right now. Now I will use a tool called Select and Place. This will allow me to move my models and snap them to any polygon based on their orientation. As you can see, I can move the cups anywhere as soon as there is a polygon. And one of my most favorite scripts is called Copitor made by Matthew Jacquin, I'm sorry if I butcher his name. Basically, the script allows you to quickly copy and paste 3ds Max files between scenes. You can find the link down below in the comments, but if you do type copy torrent in Google, you will find quickly his page. Please do support him because he deserves it. This is amazing tool which will save you a ton of time, I'm promising you. And now I will show you how you can speed up your workflow at least twice. Copitor allows you to copy six individual objects or entire scenes and keep them in slots. Let's say I have two 3ds Max scenes open simultaneously and I have to move this table and all the props to the other scene. What happens is I have to save select, type a name and merge into the other scene. And now I have the new 3ds Max open simultaneously and I am going to merge the table with all the props. Voila! And again I am in the, the previous 3ds Max scene. But this time I will use even more files, I will use the copy tool to copy them in the first slot. Now I am back in the second scene, I am going to use the copy tool to paste them into that scene. Voila! As quickly as possible I have everything pasted and I have saved at least 10 seconds of my life. Something very important to mention, Copitor does not save files in your scene project folder but instead it has its own project folder in the C drive on your computer. Now I will show you how we can create our own library from 3D models. I am going to use a different 3D model for this purpose. My goal for this example is to create a copy of this side table and add one of the props from the table. To move this bowl of fruit, I will use select and place again. Results sadly are not as expected. The gizmo sits right at the middle of the, the bowl. And this is the problem. So this means automatically I have to set my gizmo again at the bottom of the object. I am very well aware that I'm mentioning this for a third time, but really you have to make this a rule of thumb for all of your objects if you want to have a properly set up library. And now I have set my gizmo at the bottom of the bowl and I'm ready to place my object on top of the nightstand. And again, the result will not be as expected. This is purely because we have a group of objects and none of them is at the center of the gizmo. Basically the gizmo is at the center of the ball, but there is two additional fruits on the side which does not allow us to place the correctly the object. This means I have to go and manually with the snap tool add this on top of the table and job done. I'm very picky, that's why I will ungroup everything and I'll create additional separate group for these two objects from my main object 
and make all the gizmos at their center. I will create a new group and I'll move them right where I want. It is crucially important for you to maintain a correctly structured and organized library of 3D models. This will save you a ton of time down the line when you start building projects inside 3ds Max. And now I'm already satisfied with my group. I'm going to right click and choose add assets to connector. Because of my scene it was not saved, connector will prompt a message to save my file. With this option, Connector allows you to organize all of your assets and categorize them in tags, folders and types. On the right, you see all of my tags structured with subfolders and folders. On the left are all of the options which Connector allows you to use and, and choose from. Everything on the left is pretty much self-explanatory. Asset names is where you should give name to your file, tags is to put it in order and asset options are just simply options. I always choose to add asset to the default layer and to ignore all the hidden ob uh, objects. Asset preview is the way how you can create your thumbnail for your object. There are tons of options, but I always do a quick screen grab with scan line to generate my, my thumbnail. As soon as I create my thumbnail, I'm going to press add and create the object as a part of my 3D library. And now my group of objects has become part of my extensive 3D library. And I'm going to test that. First I will open my folder where I have saved the file, accessories and here is it, side table, drag and drop of the Skyline file on the left hand side. And as you see it is identical to the other one and my gizmo is right at the center and at the bottom of the whole group. Congratulations, you have reached this culmination point and this is where I'm going to share with you another tip. If you end up with file size way too large than normal, and this is how you can optimize your file and scene size. First, I'm going to save my scene and as you can see it has grown up to 33 megabytes. Now I'm going to clear some of the models inside and I'll leave only one side table and one dining table. My file size has decreased close to 10 megabytes. And now, as you can see, I have merged more models from one of my scenes. And I'll save this file again, but this time with different name. And let's check the file size. Wow, close to 440 megabytes. That's almost 10 times more. And now I will remove all the new objects and leave only the models which I already had in my scene and save again. And now you might think that the file size will be back to normal, but just wait for it. Not exactly, it's 27 megabytes and a half. And this is strange, right? And this is how you can bring back the old file size. And here is the first trick. Save, select it. Select everything and save your file as save selected. This should decrease at least 1 to 10% the size of your files. And if we check again, we will see 1 megabyte difference. Not much, but still some saving. But here is trick number two, and this is much more powerful. For this second trip, I'm going to use a third party plugin called CNI Forensic. There is a free and paid version. In my case, I'm using the paid version, but the free version has the same options. This is their website. 
go to cnisoftware.com plugins dash forensic and you can download it and install on your 3ds max the plugin is very easy to use just press scan when it's done you have to find all the problem areas and remove the garbage which is collected during the work with 3ds max this on its own will be a huge improvement in your file size let's save the file of course it will be save selected again but this time with a new name and let's check the file size 14 megabytes down from 26 megabytes previously this is huge dramatic improvement and this was all well done guys you have made it let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or future requests about videos please like that video subscribe and click the bell notification icon